afternoon. I now call to order the meeting of the Building and Contracts Committee for Monday, June 10, 2024. In accordance with Board Policy 8311, the chair of a committee at their discretion and after consultation with the staff liaison may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's meeting is being held virtually and broadcast through Microsoft Teams. In order to conduct this meeting efficiently, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board committee members will say their names before making and seconding a motion, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Additionally, as a courtesy to the committee, I ask that you inform Ms. Faya or myself if you must leave the call by using the Teams chat feature so that a quorum can be maintained. Ms. Faya, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Thank you, Ms. Harvey. Mr. Young? Present. Ms. Hen? Mr. McNillian? Here. Ms. Harvey? Present. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Faya, will you now please call the roll of staff members participating in today's meeting? Yes, thank you. Mr. Pedro Agosto? Here. Dr. Melissa DiDonato? Present. Dr. Jess Grimm? Present. Mr. Chris Hartlove? Here. Dr. Raquel Jones? Present. Ms. Shannon Reifel? Field? Apologies. Present. Thank you. Mr. Pete Dixon? Present. Dr. Kimberly Ferguson? Present. Dr. Melissa Wistead? Present. Ms. Melanie Webster? Present. If there are names that I didn't call, please state your name now. Ms. Faya, um, Dr. Kraft as well as Ms. Myers are, were both supposed to be on it, but apparently um, it looks like they may only have attendee rights. Uh, Ms. Myers is here. I see her. Oh, great. I do not see Ms. Crafts, though. Um, I can share an invite with her. Okay, thank you. So she can get on. You're welcome. Thank you, Ms. Harvey. Ms. Faye, this is Ms. Hen. I'm also on. Good oh, afternoon, thank you, Ms. Ms. Harvey. Hi. Good afternoon. Okay. Anyone else all... I missed? Thank you, Ms. Harvey. Thank you. I appreciate it. We're going to jump right in and start with uh, our first contract. And for that, I call on Mr. Hartlow. Thank you. NGO-413-24 Institute for Multisensory Education, Comprehensive Orton Gillingham. This is a new contract for five years uh, that ends on six on uh, June 30th, 2029. This contract uh, will provide hands-on interactive professional learning and instructional materials on the Orton-Gillingham methodology for reading instruction. The maximum contract spending authority is $1 million. Are there any questions? Minute, miss. I've got one. Okay, Mr. McMillian, please proceed. Now, I'm curious if I went back to August 18th of 2022, and we passed a five-year contract that was running out. We passed the five-year contract for the 60-hour training piece, and it was, uh, I think, the maximum spending was $625,000, and it's good for four years, five years. So it appears to me that it's good through uh, I guess August 18th of 27. I'm curious why why we've changed directions and now we're going this route of this new contract with a 30 30 hour uh, training. Can somebody please answer that for me? Thanks. That's a good question. I don't know if we have uh, Ms. So, Myers or this is Dr. Dinato. Yes. Sounds so, good. Um, Mr. Hartlove, actually. Um, we are not moving forward with this contract at this time. Um, Dr. Rogers, we've tried to, sorry, I sent your text message. Um, so Mr. McMillian, um, part of this was this 
uh, vendor though was approved by Maryland Leads. We've been using um, and providing this training and having a lot of success both with students oh. as well as um, ensuring that we had sufficient staff trained. Um, however, at this time, I do believe that we are going to not move forward with the contract. So are, did did you just say we're going to we're not going to pursue the 30 hours? We are not going to move forward with the IMSE contract at this time. OK, great. Thank you. No problem. Yeah. And yeah, I am so sorry. I am sorry that I should have. I didn't check my texts uh, right before the meeting. Yes, this was uh, on uh, an error on my part. We, we this is this is is pulled. We've pulled this. Okay, thank you. Okay, Miss Harvey, may I ask a follow up question? This is Miss Hen. Of course, Miss Hen. Please proceed. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, since we're not moving forward with this contract at this time, does that mean we will be continuing with the sixty hour? Orton Gillingham training that Mr. McMillian um, clarified. We already have a contract in place to deliver. We will, yes, we will finish out the um, seats that we have uh, purchased already through IMSE so that that money is not, um, you know, go to waste. Um, plus, we had it funded through Maryland LEAD, so those seats will be uh, completed, but we will begin trying to run a cohort with um, Orton, uh, Bowman's Orton Gillingham Plus. OK, to have it, do we have enough seats to have at least one um, trained individual per school in Bowman's training? Do you know or will will the board be expecting another contract um, to expand the spending authority to do so? Is that the goal, I guess, is what I'm asking? No, the goal would not be to increase spending authority at this time. There's enough spending flexibility at this time because the we've been using Maryland leads funds to pay for IMSE. So we still have funds allocated for the Bowman contract. Okay. In the okay. interest of time, I'll I'll defer to my colleagues. I'd I'd like to get okay. some more information at a follow-up um, with the full board at some point. But thank you for that information, Dr. T. Donato. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Harvey. You're welcome. Uh, so we will be withdrawing contract one. Mr. Hartlove, will you please move to the next contract? Sure. JBO-714-22, Occupational, Physical, and Speech Language Therapist and Other Related Special Education. Um, this is a consent to assignment of this contract from Maxim Health Staff Services, Inc. to Emeritus Healthcare Staffing, Inc. Are there any questions? Hearing none, uh, we will proceed to the next contract. Mr. Hartlove. Sure. Um, the next contract is JBO-710-21, uh, Temporary Adult Assistance and Therapeutic Behavioral Aids. This is an increase in the maximum contract spending authority. Uh, the contract modification will provide for the continued temporary adult assistant and therapeutic behavioral aid support required for students age three to 12 who may need additional services as outlined in the student's IEP. Approval is requested to increase spending, contract spending authority by $1,941,510. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we'll proceed to the next contract. Mr. Hartla. NTA-516-24, Summer Programs for Pre-K through Grade 8 Students Experiencing Homelessness. This is a five-year contract that ends on June 30th, 2029. This program is designed to address the impact of homelessness on academic, social, and emotional development with a structured reading and math curriculum, science exploration, enrichment, social skills groups, and cultural enrichment, enrichment activities to reduce the negative consequences associated with homelessness for children living in shelters, permanent support, supportive housing, and rapid rehousing in the Baltimore region. Um, this contract will provide for the following services, enrollment and registration of students, attendance reporting on a biweekly basis, communication with parents and homeless 
uh, services staff pro provider staff transportation to and from the summer program daily breakfast lunch and snacks during the program daily reading and math instruction social emotional skills building and enrichment activities such as water safety instruction music art movement and dance and sports bcps will pay 49 percent and st vincent de paul will pay 51 percent of the per student cost through partner contributions the maximum spending authority is uh five hundred thousand dollars are there any questions hearing none we'll proceed to the next contract mr hartlow CWA-122-24 textbooks and anthologies for English courses, grades 6 through 12. Uh, this is a one-year contract through June 30th, 2025. Uh, this contract will provide for textbooks and anthologies for English courses, grades 6 through 12. Um, uh, the materials, uh, we're looking for materials that effectively support the teaching and learning of English language arts, uh, students and professional learning for teachers and administrators to support implementation to a uh, curricula will be uh, piloted for one year. McGraw Hills Study Sync and Savis Learning's My Perspectives. Uh, this purchase will support the first year pilot of the selected curricula. Following the pilot, staff will bring contract back to the board to recommend approval of a multi-year contract extension and appropriate spending authority for one of the selected publishers. The total, uh, the maximum contract spending authority is $2,088,176. Are there any questions? Any questions? Hearing none, we'll proceed to the next contract. Mr. Hartlow. NTEA-512-242 Way Translation Communication is a two-year contract that takes us that uh, ends on June 30th, 2026. This contract will provide a two-way multilingual texting platform in the form of an app to meaningfully connect teachers, parents, and students across language barriers to increase parent engagement. Pilot findings indicated significant usage across the district, increased engagement from administrators and teachers, and increased engagement from families that received messages in their target languages, as well as announcements from teachers and other school-based administrators. The maximum contract spending authority is $1,100,000. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we'll proceed to the next contract. Mr. Hartlow, please. JBO-734-18 Music Studio Spotlight on Music. Uh, this is a consent to the assignment of this contract from McGraw Hill Education to McGraw Hill LLC. Are there any questions? Hearing none. We'll proceed to the next contract. Mr. Hartlow. Um, GDA-320-24 ESAW Curricula Assessments and Materials of Instruction, grades 6 through 12. This is a one-year contract that ends on June 30th, 2025. This contract will provide ESAW curriculum assessments and materials of instruction for multilingual learners in grades 6 through 12. The spending authority reflects the initial purchase as well as the potential need to purchase additional kits or student materials for a growing population, including replenishments and or a need for additional resources as we hire additional staff. The maximum contract spending authority is $600,000. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we'll proceed to the next contract. Mr. Hartlow. LLY-407-22 Private Duty Nursing. Uh, this is a consent to the assignment of this contract from Maximum Healthcare Staffing Services, Inc. to Emeritus Healthcare Staffing, Inc. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we'll proceed to the next contract. Mr. Hartlow. 
GDA-305-24 School Psychologist uh, Services. This is another uh, uh, consent to the assignment of this contract from Maximum Healthcare Staffing Services, Inc. to Emeritus Healthcare Staffing, Inc. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we'll proceed to the next contract. Mr. Hartla. MWE-810-19 Chromebooks. Uh, this is an extension of the contract term and an increase in maximum spending authority. Uh, the contract uh, will be extended through June 30th, 2025. This uh, contract modification will provide for the continued purchase or lease of Chromebooks and associated carts, delivery services, and licenses. Approval is requested to extend the contract for one year and increase contract spending authority by $16,500,000. Are there any questions? Hearing none. We'll proceed to the next contract. Mr. Hartlove. CWA-120-24 Information Technology Research and Advisory Services. This is a one year, seven month uh, contract term uh, that takes us through January 18, 2026. Uh, the contract is with Gartner. Um, the contract will provide information technology research and advisory services for the Division of Information Technology. The maximum contract spending authority is $230,000. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we'll proceed to the next contract, Mr. Hartler. NGO-419-24 copy office paper and toner supplies. This is a one year, 11 month uh, contract term. This contract will provide toner supplies for all schools and offices. This contract will allow BCPS to take advantage of improved contract pricing for toner for centrally managed HP printers for all schools and offices. Savings of 30% below current toner Toner costs are anticipated. Maximum contract spending authority is one million three hundred thousand dollars. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we'll proceed to the next contract. Mr. Hartlove. NGO-409-24 Field Trip Transportation Services. This is a five-year contract. Ending June 30th, 2029, this contract will provide field trip services for BCPS schools and offices. Field trips would include academic enrichment, athletic events, and after school activity buses. Field trips are funded through student activity funds by individual schools. Student athlete transportation for games is funded by the Office of Athletics. The maximum contract spending authority for this contract is $12,500,000. Are there any questions? Ms. Harvey, I have a question. Uh, please proceed, Mr. McMillian. Uh, under contract description, that second bullet, the second sentence, student athlete transportation for games is funded by the Office of Athletics. I just want to point out that back in the day, the Office of Athletics never had enough money <laughs> to cover all the bus expenses. It would fall back on the respective schools and fortunately, the Harris Bus Company extended me as athletic director a lot of credit through, through the end of the school year, giving me the opportunity to do different fundraisers and try to accrue enough money to pay off that bill. So the, I know it's some of it's funded, but with all the 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 expansion, the middle school program, and all the new, you know, the, which is a whole a, a, a lot of more tr away trips. I can't, I just find, I, I have to have somebody show me that all of that money from the, uh, is all of those games are funded by the Office of Athletics. That's all I want to say. Thank you. Duly noted. I don't know if Dr. Grimm, if you have anything you want to add to that or, uh, or I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> 
Oh, thank you for your feedback, Mr. McMillian. You're welcome. Are there, are there any other questions? Hearing none, we'll proceed to the next contract. Um, Mr. Harlow. This is another transportation uh, contract JHO-706-24 school bus and student safety initiative. This is a nine month contract that extends through March 26, 2025. This contract will provide for high definition, remotely accessible interior and exterior bus cameras. Exterior cameras will be designed to photograph and record motor vehicles that violate state law. Uh, this uh, contract will be fully funded by revenue generated through violations processed by the Baltimore County Police Department. Are there any questions? I have one, Ms. Harvey. Please proceed, Ms. Hinn. Thank you. Um, perhaps Mr. Hartlove could speak more to the revenue um, model in so much as how costs will be covered and how that will be structured in as much detail as you have, Mr. Hartlove, yes, if you will, uh, please. And, and I'm not an expert. Dr. Grimm is here as well, but I'll get it started. Um, the, the, as the uh, exhibit says, the, the, uh, the cameras will capture uh, violations and folks will be ticketed. The dollars come into the county uh, coffers. Um, the company gets their percentage to pay for the uh, for the equipment and then the other dollars are um, coming into coming into the county. They have uh, through this last budget process have have dedicated uh, a good chunk of that back to the school system. Um, um, but there's percentages and all that and, and, and there's in specifics, but this will be a should be a revenue generator for the county and also um, and as, as Dr. Grimm always says, this is a safety first item, but it also does um, have, has a byproduct of, of producing some revenue for the county and the school system. So I don't know, if Dr. Grimm, if you want to add anything. Hopefully I didn't send us down a wrong path there. No, I, no. I do have one follow up to that. And, and Dr. Grimm, I'll, I'll turn it back over to you or if you want to speak to this. Um, but my question was for Mr. Hartlove in that um, in addition to recouping the costs of the equipment. Um, we had previously discussed another a vendor's arrangement, whereas they would also um, recover part of their overhead costs, their customer service um, for managing the tickets there. Just a lot of other costs related to the company's overhead itself. And that was a, a, a concern um, that the board has expressed in the past. Do you know or are those details that this board can receive in terms of exactly um, what costs are included in the share of revenue that this vendor would be retaining? Or I believe you know? they get. I'm sorry. I believe they get a percentage. Um, is how it works. I don't think it's specific cost, but uh, it's been a while since I've looked at the specifics. So I'll turn it back over to Dr. Graham. Sure. So. Mr. Arlov, that's correct. Uh, so, Ms. Hen, the, the vendor receives a percentage of the citations um, that that are that are cited by the county. Um, but the Baltimore County Public Schools uh, do not handle any of the funds that um, that are that are part of this project. Um, what we do is we work with our our, our county partners. Um, the the tickets are paid. The money is actually held by the county, as Mr. Harlov said. Um, the vendor is is then paid. There there are some um, some processing and some other fees that they get for uh, working with the police department on the citation handling part of this. Um, that's worked out in the agreement between um, not only us and the vendor, but also um, the police department and us and the vendor. So um, as Mr. Hartloff said, the police department have. Uh, and the county government have devoted um, some significant resources to help support um, the safety initiative, uh, but it is a a, a split um, uh, revenue split by percentage. Um, the uh, vendor in this case assumes uh, risk upfront because uh, all of our buses, if the board approves this contract, will be fully outfitted with these camera systems. Um, that that will be fully operational uh, by the by the winter. 
of this coming school year. So um, that's that's where part of the, the vending part and part of the payment part comes in. Um, although the contract is um, currently only for nine months, there's actually purchasing has been work, working for us and we expect this partnership to actually be a five-year partnership with them. And so the initial, some of the agreements that we've talked about can extend uh, beyond the nine months if, if the board passes this one and then the board approves any subsequent contract that we have with this vendor. So I, I would like to see what those, the cost breakdown, um, because the concerns with the prior agreement that the board considered and rejected um, had ongoing costs. So essentially we were using board assets to subsidize the operations of the vendor who submitted a proposal, um, which was one reason the board rejected that proposal. And it sounds like it's a similar model, if you will, while there are no upfront costs. And I, I understand what you're saying about the vendor assuming the risks. I'd like to see those details in terms of the ongoing um, liability. If this is an ongoing, you know, how those costs are structured, what does that percentage look like? Are these additional fees or are these fees in addition to the percentage breakdown? Is it until they recoup their equipment costs? Is that are there ongoing fees of processing the tickets? Um, are we getting into the same thing where we're essentially using a board asset to subsidize this company's internal operations? Because that's something we need to consider as well. That's yes, there are safety benefits, but we we also need to look at what are the benefits to this and and to the board when we're using our assets to to further this. And what I would like to know what portion of revenues the county is appropriating back to the system and to see those details broken out. Are those details that the, the full board can be provided prior to tomorrow when we have to um, vote to consider this? We, we can we can I'll see how e easy it is to get them, uh, but we'll do our best to get get you uh, all the information you've requested. I think the breakdown we've had that in the past, so I think that should be fairly easy to get you the breakdown um, again. And I'm going off the you know, I, I believe everything is paid for out of the out of the the violations, the ticketing violations. There's no there's no cost to us the only the, the, the all the all the operations of the cameras uh, all come out of the um the the ticketing revenue uh that the county receives and then right. they all they ultimately reimburse the, the the company and then the county has like i said they have um, um appropriated funds uh to our operating budget based upon um these stop arm cameras I, yeah, sure. I think the question had to do with sustainability and any liability that the board um, were to incur in the long term. Let's say we have great drivers who um, do not receive these citations after the, the initial year, and we see a decrease in those that do not cover their costs. That My question is, then what? Um, if the, the citation revenue does not cover the costs that they expect to receive, is the board or is the county then liable for that difference if if they don't no, realize not. the they're, revenue the, that's expected? The, I can answer that question, Ms. Hen. The, the board the board is not liable for the equipment after the the term of the agreement. Um, the board actually will own all the all the cameras and the other equipment that have been installed on the bus um, because of the way that the contract plays out. Um, but as Mr. Hartlove said, through through their their rules and through the the purchasing agreements, um, you know whatever documents they're able to provide for you, we're certainly able to do that. But there is there is no liability to the board for the equipment that the vendor is is putting in once the term of the of the contract is finished. Okay, or costs in terms of minimums. Say that that is the correct. Minimums there are, no, are not there are no, realized. There we there there are no minimums. The the minimums the 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 payments that we would accrue for the the systems um, as part of the split would come out um, as as the the revenue split percentage that Mr. Hartwell explained. 
Thank you. And last question in, in the interest of time, and I look forward to receiving the numbers because I think the board would appreciate full transparency just around what, what we're approving. Um, is that revenue split, do you know, fixed for the life of the contract? Or does that um, shift it as is, our uh, as the equipment is purchased, similar to a lease? It is. It it shifts after the third year. So as a as a five year contract, it it shifts after the the third year. Years four and five are different than the first three years of the contract. So it's like a lease to own. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome, Ms. Harvey. If you could facilitate um, providing the board with that information from staff. If it's available, so, I would appreciate so it. So Mr. Hartleff has already committed to providing in information requested to the best of his ability. So we'll we'll proceed with the understanding that he will um, execute that task as he stated. Thank you. Are are there any other questions regarding this contract? You're welcome, Miss Hen. Okay, hearing none, we will proceed to the next contract. And for that, I call on Mr. Dixit. Afternoon, the next contract is NGO-415-24. And this is for the air filter maintenance. It's a five-year contract. Filters are changed every three years. And filters are changed on all of the HVAC equipment. The maximum the spending authority is $1,890,000. It's based on the previous trend on the expenditure. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we'll proceed to the next contract. Mr. Dixit, please. Uh, next contract, JHO-708-24 is for disposal services for uh, chemical waste and science chemicals. Uh, they are, pro they are uh, the work, work is done at the request of the school or the office, and it entails safely removing, properly packing, transporting, recycling, incinerating, and or disposing all the science and chemicals and chemical waste in conformance with, <clears throat> with the federal and state regulations. The amount requested is $500,000. It's all operating budget. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we'll proceed with the next contract. Mr. Dixit, please. Next contract is DEI-610-24 for storage tanks and associated services. It is for preventive maintenance on tanks and associated systems uh, that are uh, located in different schools and office buildings. Vendor performs inspections, repairs, installation, modification, upgrades, and any preventive maintenance needed. And the work is requested and or it comes through the third party inspection. The total amount of uh, spending authority requested is $1,500,000. It's a five-year contract. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we will proceed to the next contract. Mr. Dixit. So the next contract is CWA-131-23 for wall system inspections, preventive maintenance, repairs and replacement, and the request is for extension of the term of the contract. Are there any questions? I'm sorry, Mr. Dixit, please. I did not mention the amount, which is $419,000. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we'll proceed to the next contract. So the next contract is ASI-805-22. And this is a change in scope for a site work package, package 2A. 
for Bedford Elementary School. The package was approved by the board earlier, and this request is to add uh, $1.5 million. And the reason for that is there is unsuitable soil that we found. There's uh, on-site treatment of the, of the soil and subsurface rock found that needs to be removed. All of that is in addition to what was within the scope of the work. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we will proceed to the next contract. The next, the next contract is really not a contract. It's a, it's a request for approval of educational facilities master plan and comprehensive maintenance plan item MWE-806-24. These documents are required uh, as part of starting the capital improvement plan for state. Are there any questions? Okay, hearing none, we will proceed to the next contract. And the next contract is NTA-502-24. This is for serving line and kitchen renovation at Lansdowne Middle School. And this is part of the capital program that board has already approved. The lowest bidder is in the amount of 1640391 including contingencies of 1804430 The lowest bidder is North Point Builders of Maryland. So the approval is requested for this contract. This is capital funds. Are there any questions? Okay, thank you, Mr. Dixit. Thank you. That brings us to the end of our contract reviews. Uh, as a reminder, contract number one was withdrawn. So I will now entertain a motion to recommend that items two through 22 be moved to the full board for approval. So move Young. Thank you, Mr. Young. Is there a second? Madam Chair, may we yes, separate number 15? JHO 706-24. Yes, Ms. Hen. So I will revise my ask. Thank you, ma'am. I will now entertain a motion to recommend that items 2 through 14 and 16 through 22 be moved to the full board for approval. So move Young. Is there a second? I'll second it. Rod McMillian. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. Um, Ms. Faye, may we have a roll call vote? Yes, thank you, Ms. Harvey. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Han? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Ms. Harvey? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. The motion passes. And now, um, I will entertain a motion to move contract number 15 to the full board. I'll make that motion. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. Is there a second? I'll second it, Mr. Young. Thank you, Mr. Young. May I have a roll call vote, please, Ms. Vea? Thank you, Ms. Harvey. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Han? Abstain. Mr. Young? Yes. Ms. Harvey? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. The last item on the agenda is announcements. 
So first, I would like to uh, call attention to the fact that this will be Mr. Dixit's last building and contracts committee meeting with us. Mr. Dixit is in the enviable position of being able to retire and has done so. And so I wanted to uh, take the time to acknowledge and thank you, Mr. Dixit, for all of your work on behalf of students and staff and families in Baltimore County Public Schools and for all of all of the work you've done to keep the board informed, particularly on uh, the buildings, um, maintenance and of effort and all of those things, which can be very technical at times. So we really appreciate the work that you've done. We uh, sincerely wish you the best of days in your retirement, and we hope that you uh, take every minute to do things that bring you joy. And I will open up the floor if there are other uh, staff or board members who'd like to uh, make comments on behalf of Mr. Dixit's retirement. I will. Go ahead, Ms. Mr. McMillian. Uh, Mr. Pete, it's been enjoyable working with you the last five years. I'm I'm a little disappointed that you're going to leave us. Uh, will you be at the meeting tomorrow night? Yes, I'll be there. Congratulations, and I hope you have a good time in your retirement. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Congra McMillian. Oh, sorry, Ms. Harvey. Con congratulations, uh, Mr. Dixit. As Ms. Harvey said, I hope you get the opportunity to do all that brings you joy in this Thank next you. phase. Thank you, Mr. Young. Is there anyone else? Yes, Ms. Harvey, this is Ms. Hen. Please proceed, uh, Ms. Hen. Congratulations, Mr. Dixit. I've so enjoyed working with you um, on this committee, particularly since 2016. Um, we've been together eight years, um, which pales in comparison to the time you've been with BCPS. But for me, it's my entire time on the board, and I can't imagine serving without you. So it's very bittersweet, but um, you've given a tremendous amount to this school system, and it is greatly appreciated. I will miss seeing you, but I wish you nothing but the best in your retirement, sir. Um, Well-deserved, and hope you enjoy every moment. Thank you. So thank, thank you. you. Best wishes. Thank you. Anyone else? I just quickly just say it's been a pleasure working with you, Pete. I, I, I appreciate uh, the, the, your professionalism and your very your class act. You'll be tough to replace. So we pre uh, uh, enjoyed working with you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. OK. Anyone else before we proceed with the next item? OK, the last item on the agenda is announcements. The next building and contract committee meeting will be held on Monday, July 8, 2024 at 5 p.m. Is there any further business? Hearing none, the meeting is now adjourned. Thank you, everyone, and have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.